Hi everybody, today's the 10th of April 2020. We're right in the middle of this worldwide lockdown at the moment, but I didn't want it to go forgotten what happened 50 years ago today, on the 10th of April 1970. That's the date that, rightly or wrongly, is now sort of firmly regarded as being the date that the Beatles ended. So I wanted to commemorate, maybe not the right word, because it's obviously a sad day, but I wanted to look back on the events of the 10th of April 1970, and also what led up to that happening. So what did happen on the 10th of April 1970? Well, the main thing that happened was this newspaper headline, Paul quits the Beatles from the Daily Mirror newspaper in the UK. Uh, so they were effectively saying that Paul was leaving the Beatles and that that was the end of it. Paul hadn't actually technically said that for definite, but this was the angle that uh, our British newspapers, very sensationalist, this was the angle that they'd gone with. So how did they get that story? What sort of led up to it? Well, if we go back several months to the uh, sort of autumn of 1969, Abbey Road had been finished recording, it had been released, and it's well known that there was a meeting between the, the Beatles where John announced that he wanted a divorce from the band. As far as he was concerned, he was no longer a member of the Beatles. But he wasn't prepared to announce it publicly. Uh, I guess that he probably wanted to have that control, like the, the last thing that he did as a member of the Beatles. His band, in effect, in, in his heart, it was still he was still the leader of the band, I think, as far as he was concerned. He'd started it. I think he wanted to be the one to finish it. Um, when he was planning on doing that, I don't know. But over the next few months, Paul, George and Ringo still did some occasional recording sessions where they were, they were finishing off things from the Let It Be sessions. So in the very first few days of 1970, they, they finished off I Am Me Mine, for example. Uh, there's a little clip on uh, Anthology 3 where you hear George jokingly saying, um, you know, you may all have heard that Dave D's no longer with us. Well, Mickey and Titch and I would like to carry on the good work that's always gone down in number two. So he was having a bit of a joke there um, about the fact that John wasn't with them anymore, but they were still carrying on. Uh, but effectively, in those first few days of 1970, they were the last recording sessions that the Beatles ever did. Uh, and then, of course, Phil Spector was brought in to, to do his work. And it's really interesting that Phil Spector was working in Abbey Road uh, sometimes on the same days that Paul was in Abbey Road doing recording sessions for his debut album. Possibly didn't even know that each other were there doing the work. Um, it would have been interesting to have been a fly on the wall at Abbey Road then. But anyway, so yeah, Paul is recording his debut album and he eventually gets a release date of the 17th of April 1970 which sets alarm bells ringing with John, Paul and George, uh, John, George and Ringo because the Let It Be album is due to be just, uh, just sort of after that on the 24th of April. So Ringo offered to go around to Paul's house and try and convince Paul to uh, push back the release date of his debut album. And he took with him a letter that had been signed by John and George uh, just saying the reasons why they wanted the album to be pushed back to, to, to June, so that it didn't clash with the Let It Be album. And as far as Paul was concerned, this was this was the last straw for him. You know, I've had enough. I'm putting my album out when I'm putting it out, and sort of sod the lot of you. And this in Paul's mind, according to interviews that he's given, this, this sort of made his mind up that that was it, that was the end. And so... His album was passed to the press as for review copies, and with the review copies was this now famous uh, interview, um, not an interview as such, but a, a series of questions and answers in which Paul sort of says uh, what his intentions are for the future, and that's what was uh, sort of taken by the Daily Mirror, for example, and published. And I've just got a couple of things I want to read to you um, about what was sort of going on at the time. So the first one, I know I keep mentioning this book, but here it is again, Man on the 70s by Tom Doyle. So just a little section here about what was happening. Um, once Ringo left Paul's house with a flea in his ear, um, it was the moment when Paul McCartney finally gave up on the Beatles, the point where he mentally quit the group. Interview foe because he was at the time, when it came to promoting McCartney, Paul sidestepped face-to-face -face encounters by inserting a press release come self-interview with the review copies of the album. And uh, we've actually got the, we've got the full interview as it was in the uh, McCartney 
archive collection version and you know it's it's sort of quite some of the answers are sort of very sort of categorical and emphatic but it never actually says that he's quitting the Beatles in here so for example you've got uh, a few questions and answers here did you miss the other Beatles and George Martin was there a moment for example when you thought wish Ringo was here for this break answer no assuming this is a very big hit album will you do another answer even if it isn't I will continue to do what I want when I want to are you planning a new album or single with the Beatles no is the album a rest away from the Beatles or start of a solo career Time will tell. Being a solo album mean it's the st means it's the start of a solo career and not being done with the Beatles means it's a rest. So it's both. Have you any plans for live appearances? No. Is your break with the Beatles temporary or permanent due to personal differences or musical ones? Personal differences, business differences, musical differences. Most of all because I have a better time with my family. Temporary or permanent? I don't know. Do you foresee a time when Lennon McCartney becomes an active songwriting partnership again? Answer, no. So he never actually says there that he's left the Beatles. He's just effectively saying that he, do, he doesn't see how it's going to start up again. So, you know, it might be sort of semantics a little bit there, but uh, he didn't technically quit the Beatles. But anyway, the Daily Mirror ran with the story on April the 10th. 50 years ago today that, that Paul was leaving the Beatles and effectively that was then regarded as the end of it. So I didn't want to let this day pass without uh, without mentioning that anyway. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of other things going on in the world at the moment but uh, let's not forget that 50 years ago today um, the Beatles effectively ended and as of today you know, it's more than half a century now since the Beatles were a going concern, which is uh, a little bit mind blowing. We'll probably start turning our thoughts to 60th anniversaries now, and uh, maybe all the the releases that that might bring. I, th I think there's a lot of remixes still to come of uh, the the earlier albums. So uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on the 50th anniversary of the end of the Beatles. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your comments as always. Happy to chat about it with you, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you. Bye bye.